In this exercise, we'll tune a PID controller with the temperature control lab. We have this device, this Arduino device, and a heater and a temperature sensor, and we're going to take a PID controller and then use a simulator to come up with the best values and then implement that and test uh, the performance. Okay, so if you want to follow along, here is the link, or I'll show you if you just open up a internet browser, go to apmonitor.com slash PDC for process dynamics and control. And then if you come here on the right and go to schedule, and this is the TC lab activity just right on the right hand side of the schedule. And if you scroll down to PID control tuning, that'll take you to the page that we're going to be going through here. Uh, the objective of this one is to tune a discrete PID controller and test the performance with a series of set point changes over 10 minutes from initially 23 degrees to 50 and then to 40 degrees. So we're going to take a step up and then a step down. We'll modify the tuning parameters to achieve a low integral absolute error or the sum of absolute errors between the measured temperature and the set point. So the very first thing we need is the uh, PID control simulator we're going to have an additional parameter for this one as opposed to the last exercise where we just had a proportional integral we're going to have this derivative or tau d term as well and then when we're running the simulator we can look at the integral absolute error so let's just go ahead and grab the code if you just select this link then it will bring you it'll, it'll show you the source code and then in the bottom right select get code and that'll give you the raw, uh, the raw code. And then we'll start our Jupyter Notebook. And in this case, you don't necessarily need your temperature control lab uh, connected. So uh, I'll go to desktop and just create a new Python 3 file. OK, a new Python 3 notebook and paste it in and then run the cell. All right, so this is going to come up with the uh, the PID tuning and we can adjust we can adjust the KC value okay we can adjust uh, the integral time constant so I'm going to lower this a little bit and you want to pay attention to this uh, integral absolute error here so 1805 is what it is right now and uh, so I'm going to reduce it just a little bit more okay 1785 if I reduce it more Okay, it even goes a little bit lower. All right, and then if I go too low, it's going to have more oscillation. It's going to get worse. So maybe the optimal is somewhere uh, right around 45, 50. Okay, and then we can also give it a little bit of the uh, derivative. Okay, time constant. This might help it a little bit as well. Okay, if I take out the derivative, you can see it's 1776. I add a little bit in, and then it's going to lower it because it helps prevent some of the overshoot that you see right here at the very top. So I'm going to just um, zoom in a little bit more. Uh, you can see it's a little bit fuzzy here, but uh, you can see as I increase the derivative, um, you know, we just want to pay attention to this integral absolute error. All right, so a little bit too much derivative there, maybe. I'm going to back off just a little bit. So it just looks like it needs um, a little bit of derivative action. Maybe the best is three. Uh, so one of the things that we'll see with derivative action, if, if there's any noise, then we're going to see that amplified in our heater output. So right now, this is very smooth. But with derivative, uh, action if you don't filter the PV uh, then you're gonna get some chatter on that but let's try let's try these values right here uh, you know 10 50 and 3 and so if I come back to the page now we can try this um, we're gonna go ahead and try it out with the validation okay go ahead and select this and uh, here is, you know, just starting with <clears throat> 5, 120, and 2. So you can see uh, the results of that. But we want to improve upon this. So let's grab the source code. 
and I'll come all the way down to the bottom and get code. It's a little bit longer of a, uh, a script here, but I'll go ahead and just put that into a new, insert a new cell below, and then let me just run it uh, right here, okay? Paste it and run the cell. Let's see, if you get the no module name TC Lab, then uh, just insert a new cell and you can do pip install TC Lab and then that will install it for you. Okay, so it's going to go out and uh, grab the package and any dependencies and then uh, you only need to run that once, so I'll just comment this out. All right, and let me go ahead and do that again. All right, so here it goes. Um, it is going to be updating this plot, so you can't really, uh, it's gonna be creating a lot of updates to the plot. So for that reason, you may want to just run this in python.org version, okay? You can get an update as it goes. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and stop this. All right, I'll go ahead and stop it. And then uh, let's just run this through Python uh, the IDLE instead. There are some fixes to it that you can uh, use to clear the screen and then uh, you know have it plot again. But um, if you get that, you don't want to get all those uh, all those plots happening uh, in your window. Then just come to uh, here, create a new text file, and this will be our test script. All right, and let me come back here and get the script again. And I'll show you what it looks like through when you run it through IDLE instead. All right, and one other thing we wanted to do is just change these. I'll change that to 10 and 40. I don't remember the numbers. I'll go 50 and then 3. All right, uh, go ahead and put in... Um, values that you think are going to work well uh, for your application. All right, so it's going to connect to the temperature control lab. All right, now you can see an animated plot. You don't have to scroll through the window or make those configuration changes for the IPython notebook. All right, um, and uh, I'm just going to minimize this as we, uh, as we talk about it. Okay, so we did have the Jupyter notebook one of the things I'll just show you is here in one of my solutions that I came up with. Um, you know, I implemented something close to what we're talking about here. And this was the result right here. Okay, so a little bit of overshoot, as you saw. It comes up fairly rapidly, but you can see the difference between the simulator and this one is that now you have some uh, effect of the derivative action with the noise. You can see some fluctuations here. And this isn't a problem with the transistor heater, but let's say you had something like a valve um, and you were opening and shutting that valve all the time. That travel would then wear out uh, the valve more quickly and uh, it may be undesirable. So you may not want derivative action if it's uh, if you can't filter it to, and still get a good derivative term, or uh, if it's going to cause this amplification of the noise in in the controller output. All right, um, I'm going to go ahead and just let this run for a little bit. Um, we'll open it back up, just compare what we had with our simulator with the final result, and um, and then uh, I'll give you an overview of what we're going to be doing next. Okay, so it's progressing nicely. You can see the uh, you know the values are updating here. You can see a similar response to what I showed you before. Um, you know, it's come up, it's overshot just a little bit, and then it's coming back down. But the heater is coming back up in response to that, and it's going to try to level it out at 50 degrees. I'm going to go ahead and put this plot over here on the side, and then let's see if we can use our simulator as well just to compare what's happening here. Um, I'll make this just a little bit smaller and then bring up the simulator. 
All right, and I plugged in the same uh, values that we had. Uh, we have 10, 50, and 3. Let's plug those into the simulator. And I'll plug in a 3 here for the derivative. All right, so here's the, the response that we predicted. You can see uh, it's fairly similar. It's still progressing. It's about uh, right here in the plot. Uh, once it gets to 300 seconds, then it's going to have a set point change. It's going to go down. And uh, the controller will, um, you know, shut off the heater for a period of time, and then hopefully come back to a nominal value. So you can see the difference here between the Q value here on the left and the one on the right. Uh, the one on the on the left has, you know, the real measurement, so it has some noise in the data, and as a result, the derivative action causes a little bit more, um, you know, uh, noise that's amplified in the controller output. You can also see there is some, uh, you know, there is a little bit of a difference there as well. It probably under uh, and anticipated what, um, uh, what was going to be happening in this region. So you had to put a little bit more heat in uh, than was um, present right here. Okay, so there's the set point down. And uh, we'll just be able to monitor this, see how closely we're able to uh, predict this. It says that the integral absolute error is about 1731. That's our prediction uh, in terms of its performance criteria from the simulator. And if we go over to, uh, over to here, um, we can see uh, on the right column right here, here's our integral absolute error as it's accumulating. So it's a little bit more, and I think partially because it's a real system instead of a simulator, so there's a little bit of noise always driving it away from that set point uh, versus a simulator is very smooth. Uh, so we do expect this integral absolute error to be uh, higher than the predicted value. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pause it uh, one more time. We'll uh, refresh when this is about done. Okay, this is almost done. Uh, I just wanted to point out just a couple additional things about this. You can see when we're at uh, 50 degrees Celsius, it takes about a 50% heater output to maintain that level. Uh, maybe just a little bit lower, down to 40. When we're down to 40 degrees Celsius, you know, it takes about a 30 uh, uh, percent heater output. So you can see it's it's nearing steady state right now. It's about done at the 10 minute or 600 second mark. Okay, so it's almost done. It's kind of um, you know very close to the set point. You can see most of the movement there is mostly just due to the measurement noise and the derivative term that uh, we put on there. So one of the one of the options you might consider doing for this to get a better uh, performance, especially less um, controller output movement, is to put a derivative filter on it. All right, so that uh, is done. Let's just look at the integral absolute error here. Um, and it looks like it finished off around 2104. And we had predicted it was going to be uh, 1731. So fairly close, again, uh, just due to some of the measurement noise or um, inaccuracies of the model model mismatch to the actual process but it's fairly close to the response we've seen all right let me give a overview of what's coming next uh, with this temperature control lab we have a feed forward uh, assignment where we're going to be doing uh, looking at this additional term on the PID controller a feed forward and how we uh, design that feed forward controller